This video is brought to you by the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. Go to patreon.com slash disc golf nerd. What's up everybody? In this video we're going to talk about building your bag. This is something that comes up pretty often. People ask me questions about this, how they might go about building their bag. Um, and if I can make a video on this topic, I'm more than happy to do so. There's lots of different ways to go about this and every player is going to be different. That's kind of the beauty of disc golf is there's so many different ways to go about the same thing. Um, some players have very few different models of disc and then they have multiples of that. So when you hear the term molds, it's basically referring to a, a type of disc. It's not like a mid-range or a putter or a driver. Um, but this is a mid-range, but the mold would be the goby. So it's basically the same thing as like the name, uh, a different name of, of a disc or a model of disc. We'll call them molds because they are plastic that's molded up into this shape to produce those discs. So if you hear somebody say they only have five molds, but they have 20 discs, that means they only have five different types of disc, but then they have multiples of that. Like they have, you know, two or three gobies or buzzes or rocks or whatever it is throughout their bag. A lot of players do that. For me, I always like to have two of the discs that I consider to be most crucial to my game. Um, so in case I lose one, you know, I always have two soft magnets. If I lose one or um, if I just want to throw extra shots, it's always a good idea to have extras are the ones that you really, really rely on. Now, not everybody can afford that. Not everybody can fit that in their bag. And I understand all that. And that, again, gets back to the nuances and why it's always going to be different for every individual player. Um, this bag right here is a Prodigy BP-1. It's a relatively inexpensive bag, but it's big and it holds a ton of plastic. I think, as configured here, we have eight putters, which is a lot. Putters will take up more room in your bag because they're they're deeper, so they're, they're, the rims are thicker, so they will um, eat up more of that real estate. Then I have five mid-ranges, and then I have ten drivers. So that is a lot of discs. I basically never carry um, this bag with this much plastic in it. I will always take some of the stuff out. But it's nice to have that ability, I guess, at times if I really want to have a lot of plastic, whether I'm trying to work on stuff and I want to get out and test all of my different discs and have a lot of my different throwers with me, or if I want to put a few different ones in there to try out, um, it's nice to have that extra space. But oftentimes I will carry a smaller bag, uh, in particular the Dynamic Discs Trooper bag. Um, so I am the kind of player that when I'm headed out onto the course, I usually know where I'm going, and based on where I'm going and what I'm doing that day, whether it's a casual round, or I'm going out to do other things, but I want to have some discs with me, or maybe it's a tournament round, or whatever the different circumstances will be, and based on the course that I'm going to, I will change my bag based on that. Now, not a lot of players will do that. A lot of players will have their one bag, all the discs they have in it, and no matter where they're going, they're taking all those discs with them. But for me, I don't want to carry drivers if I'm going to a short course where I'm not going to be throwing them. Nor do I need to have like a lot of extra mid-ranges and putters if I'm going to a long course where I know I'm throwing drivers on most of the tee shots. So that's kind of my philosophy there. But again, it's always going to change based on who you are, okay? So before we go any further, if you're a new player and you're looking for the basics on this and you want to know what are the main discs you really need to have or I think you should have in your bag? I will put a link in the description below for a video I've previously made called uh, How Many Discs Do I Need, I believe it's called. And uh, you can click that, watch it, and that will break down the eight core discs that I think every player should have in their bag if possible, right? And then if you want to expand upon that, this is the way I would recommend going about that. But that, that video kind of is along the same lines, but it's it's really the bare minimum as far as I'm concerned in terms of what you want to have if you want to really put together a well-developed kind of more tournament or professional style disc golf bag system. Even if you're just a casual player, but you want to have what you think you should have, I think that's a great place to start. But if you want to go beyond that, then we'll step it up into this video and what I'm about to talk to you about right now. Okay, so for this system, I'm going to recommend that you work in threes. What I mean by that is you have three different variations for each of the different speed ranges throughout your bag. So for me, that is putters, mid-ranges, control drivers, which are basically the same as fairway drivers. These happen to be all nine speeds, which is a speed that I like and work well for me, so that's kind of what I 
use for my control or fairway driver's uh, speed, and then distance drivers, right? And within that, I will have more than, than just three, right? But I will often be um, just having multiples because of that. Like I have two fuses, I have two gobies, um, I showed you my two magnets, that sort of thing, because those are crucial discs that I want to have extras of. Um, whenever, whenever possible, and whenever I can carry them, fit them where I'm in my bag, where I'm going, and if I feel as though I need them for for the round at hand. But let's talk about the three putters that I like to have. So three different molds, three different type of putter for three distinct rolls in the bag. Understable. This is a soft magnet. This is my one of my favorite discs of all time. I'll use this for shots that need to go to the right, I'll use this for hyzer flips, I'll use this for technical like woods approaches where I need to sneak through some trees. Uh, if I don't have much of a throw, these are great because I can just kind of flick them and they'll fly because they're understable and they want to float and they don't want to fade out much. So understable putter is the soft magnet. Then I have a neutral putter. This is the link. This one will fly on the angle that I put it on. Right? So I can throw it on hyzer, I can throw it flat, I can throw it and hyzer, and it will fly on those lines without much natural flip or much natural fade at the end of the fight. So this is a disc that I can lean on for a lot of different shots. And if you're only going to throw one of these three, if you can only fit one of these three, I think the neutral one is what you want. It's going to be the most versatile, right? So if you only have the space for one throwing putter, get something that's going to hold different angles because you don't want to have something that's just understable or just overstable because then you're going to be handicapping the amount of shots that you can throw. This disc can fly on the angle that I put it on from start to finish and that's beautiful. Wonderful to have. But it's really great to have a soft magnet for flippier, flippier shots. And then I have the Caltrop which is a flat to overstable disc. So this one I can throw it flat, it won't turn, it'll fly straight and it'll fade. If I throw it on hyzer, it'll really fade aggressively and dig, sit near the basket. The overstable approach disc is a crucial disc that I always recommend players have in their bag. Um, this is the one that I like, the, uh, the soft caltrop. It's been phenomenal for me throughout the time I've been using it. But those are the three. So understable, neutral, overstable, right? Pretty simple. I'm sure you guys could probably have figured this out. Now, if we're talking about like having extras and stuff, I have another soft magnet because it's one of my favorite discs, so I have a backup of that. I have an Opto Caltrop, which is the same mold, but it's a different plastic, so it's a little bit more overstable, a little bit more glide too, so I'll throw this one more off the tee, and I'll throw the soft one for approach shots, and then I have this um, Lux Link, which is a premium plastic link. It's a little bit more overstable than the other one, it gives me a slight variation in there, plus it's a premium plastic that'll hold those flight characteristics for a long period of time. Now stepping it up into mid-ranges, exactly the same concept. I have two fuses for understable, I have two goies for neutral, and then I have an anchor for overstable. Exactly the same system. So again, hyzer flips, turnovers, whatever I need a, a flippy disc for. The fuses are perfect. They're not so understable that they're hard to control, but they really hold um, understable lines really well. The gobies will hold the flight angle that I release them on very nicely um, and then the anchor is overstable or if I can't reach it with my Caltrop I'll throw this disc also great for into the wind. So exactly the same kind of rolls right but these go a little bit farther than my putters and that's really the only main difference between the speeds is that they will go a little bit farther and often are capable of making more uh, exaggerated shapes through the air right so if I want the disc to get farther to the left or farther to the right, it's easier to do that with a faster disc like a mid-range than a putter. Again, driving it home, <laughs> same concept once again. Two understable control drivers, these are both Furies, understable nine-speed disc, but I have an Escape that's very similar to the Link and the Gobies, but driver distance. This disc goes really far as well, great overall disc I recommend checking out. Um, but it mostly holds release angles since it's a driver, it's a faster disc. It is more likely to fade at the end of the flight because it has more inherent speed to it. It takes more um, energy to fly on the intended flight path, um, but that's always going to be the case. As you increase speed, you need to throw it a little bit faster to get it to kind of 
behave the way it's intended to, right? I'm sure you guys understand that, and I have other videos about that as well. I'm probably going to make a video I'm just talking about speed relatively soon, so uh, leave, a, leave a thumbs up or leave me a comment if you want to see that. And overstable is the culverin. Not tremendously overstable disc, but it's definitely noticeably more overstable than the Escape, which is noticeably more stable than my Furies. So I can throw these, they're all the same speed, they all feel relatively similar in the hand, which I, I like a lot. Same plastic type even for all of these, but they fly differently, and again, threes. One, two, three. Very simple concept, and then same thing for my Thrashers. I have a really understable one. This one is getting a little bit more understable, but it's still more neutral. Um, this one is probably the most neutral that I have, and then this one is a little bit more stable than that. Then I have one more distance driver, which is this um, Burst Havoc. That's the most overstable distance driver I have. It's not very overstable, but plenty so for me. And if I want to throw an overstable driver, I'm probably just going to throw my Culver in because I really like that disc. And I don't really sacrifice much distance from it. Um, even though it's a slower disc, I will still throw it just about as far as a faster disc based on the fact that it has more glide. And because of the way I throw and the speed that I throw at, I don't really see a huge benefit from throwing those faster discs. Um, so there's a lot of different things to, um, to consider. Now, I'm not necessarily recommending these particular molds or model of disc to you guys to, to build your bag. It's more of the overall concept, working in threes. Understable, neutral, and then overstable. So once you find um, discs that fit that role, then you can kind of adjust that. A lot of players will employ a similar system where they have you know a, a flippy, and then a stable to neutral, and then an overstable disc. But it might be the same disc, right? You might have a brand new, fresh, uh, let's just go with rocks, any of a rock, like a basic DX rock. You could have a brand new fresh one that's still overstable um, out of the box. Or maybe you have like a Champion Rock 3 or some, a Metal Flake Rock 3, something that's a little more overstable, but it's still a rock, right? Then you have another one that's broken in, so it's straight to neutral, It'll hold those angles. And then maybe you have another one that's really broken in, really beat up, or maybe it's a little bit lighter weight, or the other factors that can make it more understable, and you can adjust it that way too. You don't have to use a completely separate mold for that. And that's largely a really nice way of doing it. Like, like I said, for, for, my, for my distance drivers, they're all thrashers, but they vary quite a bit. And I still have understable and then more neutral to overstable, right? So same disc, but you can change it based on plastic type, based on the weights, based on the wear of the disc. That's another way to go about doing it, but it's the same concept. So, bring it home. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you have suggestions of other kind of beginner or instructional content you think I might be able to help out with, you can leave those suggestions in the comments as well. If you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel to stay tuned for future videos. I appreciate that. And also a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon, the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. For as little as two bucks a month, you can join that and you'll have your name listed in all the credits of all my videos and help be a financial contributor, kind of producer of the show here and uh, help me out. I'm also working on trying to develop some other content and uh, perks for the Patreon members going forward. So I appreciate all of you guys very much and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.